Hey, what is up guys? This is Brad with Despite Fitness and I am uh, coming to you with another video. We're going to do some form checking today. We got a couple of guys that are uh, asking me to take a look at their deadlifts. Um, we got Crum and we got Dan. And so uh, I'll take a look at both of their deadlifts and kind of go over that here in just a second. Um, also, just kind of wanted to real quick um, thank everybody uh, for, you know, all the, the positivity and support for the, uh, the surgery video or just me kind of talking about what's going on. Um, I really appreciate all the well wishes, so thank you guys very much. Um, and then I also got a lot of comments about um, kind of people being excited about the channel or, or just thinking that the channel is cool. Um, but I got to tell you guys honestly that what really makes the channel cool is you guys, right? So um, without all of you that are willing to tune in and check things out and participate, um, message me and all that other stuff, it's just me in front of a camera talking about whatever. So really honestly to me, the part that makes this really cool is that people from really all around the world willing to check in and, and interact with me. And so, uh, so really for anyone that says that the channel is kind of cool, I have to turn it right back on to you guys and say thank you because you guys are the one that is really making this channel cool. So um, I appreciate all the interaction. I, I appreciate all of the, the subscribership that's been uh, kind of bumping up every single day and all that stuff I just, it's more than I thought I'd ever get to, so um, it's amazing. So just thank you guys very, very much. All right, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the deadlift form check. I lied, I got one more little quick aside. Ordinarily, when doing something like this, I would be much more loud and energetic. However, um, I film predominantly at home, and I have a house full of kids. And so the easiest time for me to film is at night when they're asleep. Uh, so therefore it's a little bit hard for me to be too loud and energetic uh, because well everyone's sleeping and I would go outside but it's like it's hot and miserable and I don't want to start sweating just filming something and getting eaten up by mosquitoes so we'll have to settle for a somewhat inside voice uh, while I do all this stuff cool all right so watching the first video with Dan um, Dan, it looks like you're, you're holding the bar too close to your shin. Um, you right here, uh, it looks like the, sh the, the bar is already making contact with your shin. So I'd say um, as you're doing your deadlift, you want the bar to kind of bisect your foot. So um, really, as you lean forward to hold the bar, it really should not be making contact with your shins uh, before you begin pulling. Um, everything else looks kind of fine with this first video. Um, I, again, I'd suggest if you're going over 50% um, to use a belt. Um, you know, but I can see you kind of uh, dipping down. I can see you bracing. Um, I might, I might also recommend right here, kind of before you begin the pull, uh, retract the scapula back a little bit more. Um, they, they seem to be kind of forward, so uh, pull those scapula back, get that that upper back nice and tight. Um, you can see right here, uh, the, the back is even, uh, looks fairly neutral. I don't see a lot of lumbar flexion here, so that's, uh, that's pretty all right. All right, moving on to the second video. Um, same thing, I see the bar on the shins. Hold on a second there, go back here just a second. See how those knees look like they kind of collapse in on each other a little bit right there at the at the pole. Um, that's kind of the same thing that I talked about uh, with Billy. I see those you know those legs kind of collapsing on each other here. Um, for this, um, you have a fairly narrow stance as it is, Dan. I, I don't want to see that kind of that valgus collapse so much. Um, so what I'd probably like to see you do uh, recommendation wise is um, do some some. Um, like hip circle or use a band and wrap it around your around your um, your, your legs kind of above the knee um, and use that to help force your legs out because um, I don't think those that knee collapsing is giving you any power here I think I'd like to see those knees stay more neutral so you can see them kind of kick in it looks to be a couple inches here um, so I'd say that's something that you definitely want to try to combat um, and you can do that by um, doing uh, some work with 
uh, adduction to abduction. Um, but specifically, the thing that's really going to help with this is um, you know putting that band around the knees and really working on forcing those knees out um, so that when you actually do the movement, you're actually going to try to keep more of a neutral position where you're not necessarily forcing the knees out or having them crash in, uh, but they'll stay neutral. All right, carry on. And the rest of the movement looks fine. Um, that's my biggest uh, takeaway for what I see here in this movement is seeing those knees crash in. All right, on your third video here is more from the side, so let's take a look at this. So it gets set. Uh, again, he looks like he has the bar just probably a little bit too close to his shins. Uh, so Dan, you might want to move that, move that bar just a little bit away from your shins. It gets you a, a better starting point. And deep breath, but it looks like those, uh, those shoulders are kind of pushed forward a little bit. Um, you know, I, I've said it before, but I think that you can kind of get a little bit more of that scapular retraction, pull the scapula back, get some more tightness in the upper back. I mean, I think that it will help you kind of combat some of that, uh, some of that lumbar flexion or flexion that you get to see here. So, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of rounding here in this first rep, and you'll get to see kind of the, the next couple reps how we do here. Set it down, get your breath, big breath. So big breath and brace, it's good. Opportunity there again, like I said, pull back the scapula. And then right when we start, you see that uh, the lumbar flexion kicks in here. So you start to see that rounding. Um, one, I think about would help here. And then um, tight, keeping that tight, upper, keeping the upper back tight will also help. And then we go for the last rep. Big breath, good. Kind of loads it up. Now, right away, you start to see again that rounding in the back. You're definitely a rounded position here. So um, you can see that you're, you're, you're losing position each time each rep uh, is getting just a little bit worse as you kind of tax yourself. Um, and that's, that's gonna happen no matter what, if you get to a certain point, you're gonna, you're gonna experience it as you get you know, closer and closer to maximal weight, uh, something is going to break down. But I think this isn't uh, a sufficient enough weight um, to you know, make you do that. So I think we can definitely work on it. And then last rep. And then I have some suggestions for what we can do with that. And we'll go over that here in a minute after we look at uh, Kerm's video. We're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the, um, the only video that Kerm sent for me for me to take a look at. And uh, here we go. All right, so it gets set. You can see the breathing. Um, the bar might be just a little bit too close uh, to the shins there. You might want to roll it out just a tiny little bit. Um, but not not too too much. It should be kind of between um, it, kind of halfway in between the shin bone and the top the top of the toe or the tip of the toe. Big breath. Now here is an opportunity to kind of pull those scapula back. Um, you know, get yourself tight before you begin to you know, make that move, uh, and try to try to actually uh, absorb the weight. Dips down. You can see as we go back here. As he begins to set, you can see these shoulders are kind of pushed forward just a little bit. So, uh, Kerm, I think that you could probably pull uh, the scapula back, kind of the same comment that I made for Dan. Pull those scapula back. I think it'll keep you uh, a nice tight uh, upper back. And then you can kind of see as we go here, you can see a little bit of that, um, that lumbar spine flexion. You're kind of rounding here. So one thing I think a belt will help. And then um, I think, you know, pre-tensioning or pre-tightening up that upper back and keeping that nice and tight will help kind of keep you that neutral spine so you don't get that, uh, that lumbar uh, spine flexion. And then we work the way the rest of the way up. It's good. Okay, so for, for both our guys here that uh, submitted the videos for this, uh, this form check, uh, Kerm and Dan, um, you know, I see um, you guys are doing uh, fairly well. I think probably Kerm was holding the bar maybe just a bit too close as well. Um, both of you could push that off of your uh, off of your shins just a little bit. Um, I want to see a little bit more you know, scapular retraction, kind of pull those back to keep that upper back tight. I think that if you keep that upper back nice and tight, um, it'll help kind of uh, combat some of that um, uh, that lumbar flexion because 
you know, if you're pulling, if you're pulling tight with this back, um, it pulls this back, and as you begin to initiate that drive, it's going to stay stable. Versus if you have slack in those in the upper back, not pulling those shoulder those shoulders back and taut. As you begin to drive, it's going to do this on you, and and keep those those shoulders down as you begin to kind of lift that weight. So I think that if you keep those shoulders back and tight, as you begin to drive, it's going to come up more as one unit versus kind of that. Um, almost like a seesaw effect as, as the hips rise and the kind of that upper body doesn't. Um, that's what I mean more by that seesaw. Um, so a little bit upper back tightness will help you guys. And then there's one thing that I really, really like in terms of um, kind of giving advice to help guys, um, you know, change up their form a little bit for, uh, for deadlift. Now, the deadlift is called a hinge, right? And that makes sense because you're, you're hinging. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to go as you deadlift here and then here. Um, that's bad. So um, deadlift should be more like this versus this. And one of the ways that I try to cue to fix that is using a band. And um, bands are fairly prevalent. You can get them kind of all over. Most gyms have them. If you don't have them, you can order them. Um, very easy to get in the United States. I would imagine fairly easy to get in the UK as well, as uh, Dan is from the UK. Um, you're going to want to use band of sufficient tension um, to your strength. So for both of you guys, I might recommend probably nothing less than a purple band or uh, a band about about yay big, right? You can see kind of how, how wide that band is, right? So that band might be sufficient enough to give you um, the work that I'm going to be talking about here. All right, guys, what you're going to do is you're going to take your band, you're going to put it over your barbell. It doesn't have to be perfect, and you're going to step on it and pull. Like that. Now, you can use the band all by itself, or you can use the band with a little bit of weight as well. Um, obviously, if you have some weight on there, it'll be easier to step on and, um, you know, and set it up. But there's something about putting the band over the bar that really helps cue to, to lock your upper back in tight and to move up as one unit. Um, you'll quickly recognize that the additional tension that the band puts on, um, you know, you don't want to kind of hinge in that knot the, the way that you don't want that I demonstrated. Um, it, it'll help you prevent from, from doing that. Um, this is something that I've uh, done with a number, of, a number of people kind of in person. And when I see them hinging more at the hip versus standing up as one unit, um, this, this really helps kind of correct that. So for both of you gentlemen, what I would recommend is, is find a band and utilize the band. Um, it's a really good kind of a cue. It's something that you can do as an exercise in and of itself or you can do as a warm-up before you begin actually pulling. Because once you kind of do it a few times and you feel that feeling of having to stand up as one unit versus doing that, that two-step hinge, um, it, it really kind of ingrains that neural patterning into you and, and so it makes it easier to replicate that once you experience it with a band. And uh, I'd say five or six times now, I've taken guys who have um, done that one, two-step hinge um, very badly um, and gotten them to move their whole body as one single unit and get away from that uh, that two-step hinging. So uh, for both of you guys, that's what I'd recommend. Um, so um, use a band, uh, work on that scapular attraction, uh, and then probably keep the, the bar a little bit further out away from your shins, uh, and I think that'll get you guys in a good position. Now, you don't want it up over your toes. It needs to kind of bisect the foot, right? All right, so um, both Dan and uh, Kurum, I want to thank you guys very much for sending me, you know, video clips for me to be able to work with, uh, to be able to critique. Uh, for any of you viewers that are out there, if you see some things in these videos that, um, that you think um, would be, you know, valuable uh, contributions to make to kind of tell these guys or give them some, some feedback on, on their form, uh, by all means, leave those comments. Um, but I'm, I'm only going to allow, you know, positive, constructive comments. Um, any kind of trash talk and tearing down like that's it's just not gonna fly. Um, it's not what uh, it's not what we're about. So 
um, yeah, so thank you guys very much for sending those videos in and allowing me the opportunity to uh, to kind of critique and to make some uh, recommendations for how you guys can fix those. If you guys have more questions than what I've covered or you feel like anything's been unclear, uh, leave it in the comment box below or hit me up as you already have, and I'll try to make sure that I find, you know, find a way to be more clear uh, about the things that I've described to you. Anyway, guys, that's it. That's the video. I hope you like it. Um, if you have any comments or questions, uh, like I said, leave those in the, in the chat box below, and I, I will be sure to respond to you. Hopefully this new format works out, um, and uh, it's not too cumbersome. Um, yeah, that's it. Anyway, guys, uh, remember, no matter what it is you think you can't do, train despite, you either find an excuse or you find a way. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we will catch you in the next video, guys. Peace.